remember Luke Cage season two, the character Bushmaster? Are you familiar with what a Bushmaster is? A Bushmaster is one who has mastered the bush, the bush being the herb, the owner of the herb, Ogun. That's why the character appeared to be impenetrable, to be able to have the same strength as Luke Cage. You've seen what he did to Luke Cage when they first met up. Luke Cage never been hit that hard before in his life. That was the master of the bush, the Ogun energy. That ferociousness, that acidic force, that pure strength. The one determined to pave the way. The most feared of the Orisha, which Orisha means selected consciousness. Ogun is symbolized by iron or associated with iron technology but Ogun means the owner of the herbs the spirit of the herbs the knowledge wisdom and understanding of the herbs that's why he was able to do what he did with nightshade that's why he knew concocting certain herbs and putting certain herbs together in a ritualistic form that it would give him strength, it would give him power far beyond the average man. But see, he was already born strong, he was already born with the strength. That's why he was able to take that herb and facilitate that herb. That's why his body binded to that herb and it made him so strong, so fierce, so ferocious. Now, some of you may think that this is just something that came from a comic book character or a television show. But no, actually nightshade is a real thing and it actually grows in the Blue Mountain areas in Jamaica. Now if you're not familiar with that area or what that is, you should look into that. Nightshade that grows in other places can be poisonous, but there in that Blue Mountain region of Jamaica, it has a lot of medicinal properties. It will be what they would call a super herb, a super herb. Now, the Blue Mountain region of Jamaica is where a lot of the Rastas live, those that rebelled against their oppressors, those who went off into the mountains to get away from their oppressors and the sellouts and the overseers of their oppression, those who look like them, those who were doing the bidding of their captors, their slave makers those that imprisoned them mentally and physically because you know if you control the mind the body will follow but yeah these are a group of people who secluded themselves they isolated themselves they put themselves in a region in a mountain where the the troops the British troops the foreign troops they couldn't make it in that area you had to cross rivers and climb waterfalls to get to that region of Jamaica and they couldn't do it. They couldn't get there in their big floppy boots. They didn't have the agility to be able to troop through that jungle terrain. These are people who live in nature. They live a natural life. They're separate from those in Jamaica that are trying to live like Europeans. Those that are trying to live like their oppressors or the nations that have oppressed them or that they've allowed to oppress them because they've been psyched out of their mind. Now, some would say, well, you know, what does that have to do with anything? Okay. Now, the Haitian Revolution. If you're not familiar with that, look that up. The Haitians defeated Napoleon's army. They told stories of how bullets were bouncing off of these Haitians. Bullets were flying right through them. They thought these people were beyond human or what they would call supernatural. It's because they mastered the herb. They became children of Ogun. They were bush masters. They knew how to work the herbs, how to put those herbs together to give them what some would call superpowers. See, these are the things that comic books are based off of. This is a fantasy based off of 
indigenous realities. Something that a foreigner took and appropriated into their culture. Fabricated a lie and made it a part of their mythology to take claim for these great acts and for this greatness, for this superb state of being, superb state of mind. Now, some would say, well, that's Haiti. What does Haiti have to do with Jamaica? Okay. Well, a lot of um, what they call slaves, which were really prisoners of war, they were shipped from place to place, island to island, all through the Caribbean islands. So some may have been taken here, taken there, taken from Trinidad to Barbados, from Barbados to Jamaica, from Jamaica, some ended up in Haiti. Bookman Dada, one of the leaders of the Haitian Revolution. If you're not familiar with him, look him up came from Jamaica he was a rebellious prisoner of war so they sent him to Haiti now comprehend this a lot of those people who were taken into captivity they would hide seeds from different herbs in their hair on their body so they can use these things and plant these things where they were taken to to use these things for medicinal purposes so they wouldn't be stripped of the things that naturally feed them, the things that naturally nourish them and sustain them. So, when you hear stories about the Haitian Revolution and bouncing off, and bullets bouncing off of people, bullets flying through Haitians, different things like that, the fact that they say a group of farmers defeated Napoleon's army, which was known for conquering the world, allegedly once upon a time how were they able to do what they do because they were the real live bushmasters and they used nightshade along with other herbs to become successful in battery and to become successful in battle and obtain victory some would say well look at Haiti now Look at Jamaica now. That's because a lot of who you see now in these places, they've forgotten the faces of their forebearers. They've broken the pact with their ancestors. They went against the divine nature of their self. Trying to live like and trying to be like something that they're not. Modeling after their oppressors. That put them in the situation that they're in now. Trying to live like their oppressors live. Trying to carry out and continue to live that lifestyle. See, they became physically free, but their minds were still in captivity. As the, each generation comes into existence, they become weaker and weaker. They're not as strong as the generations that existed before them. So, a lot of what the elders possessed, a lot of the power, a lot of the magic, it was lost. But, I say that to say that, when you're looking at these comic books, when you're watching these superhero movies and things like that, know that these characters are based off of the reality of indigenous cultures. There's stories and accounts of the um, the Igbo people, people that they took from areas of what you would call Nigeria and brought them over here in captivity. Stories of how these people flew back home. They have these different things documented. You can look into these different things, but these are the things that comic books are based on. These are the things that superheroes are based on. They take the reality of indigenous cultures of indigenous people and the great feats that they accomplished in certain points in time. And they take that and they appropriated that into their culture. And they gave you these watered down 
make-believe superheroes with make-believe superpowers and abilities. See, they replace the reality with the fantasy. So most people think that it's not real. That can't happen. Nobody could really do that. No one's able to levita levitate or shapeshift or fly or walk through walls. There's still accounts of this in Nigeria. There's still accounts of these things that go on in different areas in Ethiopia or East Africa so, or what some would call the Middle East, what some would call India. Because really, you're, you're, you're dealing with Sudan, you're dealing with Somalia, you're dealing with Ethiopia, with Ethiopia. Once upon a time, these places were all part of the absent. Absinian Empire. They changed the places, drew up imaginary geographical lines, and convinced people to believe the lie. That this place is called this, and this place has always been called this, and that these people have always been where they were and they've always looked how they looked and they've always done what they've done but in actuality a lot of these people have been watered down a lot of these people have been altered into something else taken so far from who they originally are that they're unrecognizable but the culture still remains although it may be perverted Although it may not be in its original form. But in that case, it's not wise to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Keep the baby, throw out the dirty bath.